Welcome. First, I would like to thank Mr. Paul Bergen for joining us today and welcome to our programs. And we are very, very concerned about what's happening in our community today as far as the outrage of crime and how our criminal justice system is handling it. So we have some questions and hoping that Mr. Bergen will give his professional opinion about how the Ministry of Justice Committee should address them. The Ministry of Justice Committee was developed to encourage our legislators to change and implement laws to improve our cr criminal justice system. Our comprehensive plan is to raise awareness among policymakers, the public, and the media. Mr. Bergen, thank you for accepting our invitation to be with us today. And we do have some questions to ask you about what we think and how we should proceed. You're very welcome. It's my honor to be here. Thank you. One of our main concerns, and I think is the biggest cause of the problems in our community today, is guns and the violence that is caused. Uh, every time there's a shooting, we hear about the shooting, but we don't know where the guns come from. We believe that what could be done to help stop some of the guns from coming into our community is to have these guns insured, just like a car. You know, um, gun makers, gun dealers, and gun owners, first of all, should secure their weapons. Somebody need to be held responsible. Is there anything the public can encourage our legislators to do something about guns coming in our community? Well, guns are coming from all different sources, not only from the manufacturers, but the individuals that make their living selling guns. In many states throughout the United States, and that's approximately 40 states, you could purchase a gun with any form of a photo identification, whether it be a driver's license or anything else. So you have an influx of guns coming from these states that permit individuals to purchase guns in any quantity, any type of gun, with merely a photo identification. That's the first thing that has to be stopped and outlawed. The second thing is you have manufacturers that manufacture a tremendous amount of guns. If we were to enact legislation which prohibited the amount of guns to be produced, it would stop the influx of guns on the streets. And the third and most important thing is individuals that own guns have to be held responsible if that gun is negligently placed, recklessly placed, or they permit an individual to take that gun out of the house and use it in a crime. If we hold the person who purchased the gun responsible, then they'll take better care of that gun. So those are the three things that I believe, in my professional opinion, based upon my experience as a prosecutor, both in the state as well as federally, as well as defense counsel for the last 15 years, would probably precipitate a less amount of violence in our communities. Okay, well then the Ministry of Justice is on the right track. Okay, now another concern that we have is dealing with warrants. When people are released from jails and they just happen to be walking down the street and some police officer feel like something suspicious even though it isn't and let's check them out. They do a check and find out there's a warrant. Now this person has been uh, detained in custody for about six years and the warrant ha had to have been before the six years. So now they've been released after being in custody. They want to get on their, with their lives. Now they learn there's an old warrant. Now they have to go back to jail. Now, shouldn't that be addressed before the person is released? Well, the Bureau of Prisons, Department of Corrections, are actually attempting to do that. Before an individual is released, whether it be from an arrest in custody, prior to having a disposition of their case, but prior to release from serving a sentence, individuals are record checked. They go into a computer system and they make a determination as to whether that individual has open warrants 
or detainers from anywhere in the United States. They even do an Interpol check now in many federal prisons to determine whether the individual has a record internationally. And before that individual is released, they make them clear up the warrant or they send the individual and transfer him to that particular jurisdiction. The problem that arises is if you have a municipal court warrant or warrant from another state, the prison or the police agency that has the obligation to notify that particular jurisdiction notifies them. And it's up to that particular state, municipality, whatever, to make a determination as to whether they want that individual for those type of offenses. If that jurisdiction makes the decision that they don't want those individuals, then they'll release them even though they have a warrant. It's called the extradition process. So I believe that the criminal justice system is working to alleviate that, but the problem that you have is you have a lot of states, a lot of municipalities that merely do not have the time the energy, nor the funding to pick up individuals on minor type offenses. Most individuals will not be released from custody if they have a warrant for a serious offense. But there are th those who are released, even though the offense may not be serious, but re-arrested. I mean, why should this person have to suffer all over again? How are they going to continue on with their life? The individual should not be arrested. There should be a way of clearing that warrant from the system if that municipality or that state does not come to get them or they inform the police department that they're not wanted. I just had a case very recently where an individual served approximately three years in state prison, was released, served on parole, was released from parole, had a probationary term, was released from probation, and had a warrant that was six years old. The problem is when each one of these agencies, state corrections, law enforcement, probation department, state parole, notified, for instance, hypothetically, New York, that that individual has a six-year-old warrant, New York told them that we're not coming to pick him up on that warrant, so they released him. Now that individual is walking down the street just like you stated, they record checked him, and the police sh showed a warrant from New York that's six years old. Now that individual sat in jail in Newark, in New Jersey, waiting for New York to make again another determination. So it isn't fair. So once a jurisdiction declines to pick an individual up, declines to have that individual transferred to their custody, then that warrant should be cleared from the computer and that individual should have the right to voluntarily go to that jurisdiction to clear up that warrant. Okay, so if there is something that the Ministry of Justice should address to our legislators about clearing this matter. Absolutely, up. what the Ministry of Justice should do is mandate that once an individual is released after the jurisdiction that has the warrant is notified and refuses to either pick him up or transfer him, then that warrant should be taken out of the system so it doesn't destroy, hinder, and affect that person's life. 